In 1795, the Hudson's Bay Company established a major fur trading post along the North Saskatchewan River and named it Edmonton House. It would be renamed Fort Edmonton and relocated several times over the ensuing years. Then, in the shadow of the recently completed Alberta legislature and having outlived its useful purpose, the fort was dismantled in 1914 for the last time. Between 1914 and 1966, the city of Edmonton's population would grow from 72,000 to over 381,000 and was on the eve of its 100th birthday. Today, Fort Edmonton Park is where Edmonton's fascinating history comes to life. It offers people a unique living history experience and the opportunity to interact with storytellers, knowledgeable interpreters, and live entertainers in authentic period costume. Visitors hear the stories of the people and events from the past in the first person. They gain a deep appreciation of the fur trading era and the challenges of building a commercially and culturally vibrant city in a fun and engaging way. The original plan, when you think back to around 1967, was a notion of recreating the old Fort Edmonton and maintaining that legacy. So the original vision was a fort. The most recent version of the master plan that we developed in 2009 was to really take Fort Edmonton in a new direction. The new master plan lays out an ambitious path for the future of Fort Edmonton Park. The four key components of the plan include a new front entry and guest services area, Expansion of the 1920s Midway attractions. Expansion of the Selkirk Hotel on 1920 Street. And the jewel of the expansion, the Indigenous People's Experience. The first of the projects that visitors will notice is a new front gate and guest services area that will present a welcoming first impression. The train station will be repurposed as an interpretive space representing the significance of the railway to Edmonton's early development. The second element of the master plan is the expansion of the Midway. Visitors will experience the carnival atmosphere of an authentic 1920s style Midway. New attractions will include a recreation of the Green Rattler roller coaster that was at Borden Park back in the day, as well as a sideshow alley, a maze, bumper cars, and a new Ferris wheel. There will also be a review theater and cookhouse with seating for 200 to 250. The third element is the expansion of the Selkirk Hotel, which will include a facade representing the historic Windsor and Albion blocks between the existing hotel and the Capitol Theater on 1920 Street. The hotel expansion will include a 250-person ballroom, an expanded lobby, and 22 new guest rooms maintaining the look and feel of the historic standards of the 1920s. The Indigenous People's Experience is the signature exhibit of the new expansion plan. It recreates the meeting place of Indigenous peoples both before and after the arrival of the first explorers. First Nations and Métis people will share their stories their way. These remarkable stories are shared through multimedia shows, skilled storytellers, and interactive experiences all presented in a fun and engaging way. There's nothing like seeing the history come alive. Adding the Indigenous people's experience will add a whole other layer of that that takes us back to before colonization in a very respectful way. And I think those learning opportunities, both for Edmontonians uh, and for our guests, will be very memorable. I think any venue that provides an opportunity for the public to learn about treaty is really helpful. There's the written text of treaty, which normally a person can access through a library and so on. But what's not uh, understood well, I don't think, is the indigenous side of treaty. So a venue like this, like Fort Edmonton, where it provides an opportunity for visitors to access that information, especially the indigenous side of treaty, then I think it's really, really important and helpful. It will be truly, I think, 
the first time that we will really feel like our history is being told properly, and that's really important. Our partner, the Fort Edmonton Foundation, is the last piece of the puzzle. They have a capital campaign going to generate $11 million, which gets us there, gets it completed. And when you think about $150 million, and when you're only $10 million or $11 million away, you're so close. We're so close. We can get this done.